Bokia Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Do have some very serious uh, breaking news here. Only confirms what I believe and have feared is might, might end up happening. Uh, it is an early stage at best, though, for me to be able to say this right now. Syria uh, says that Hezbollah, um, excuse me, Syria says that Israel has actually bombed uh, Hezbollah's uh, a weapons convoy from Damascus early this morning headed over to, um, let me get the story here. Looks like I got it blocked here with my own uh, face there. Sorry about that. Let me move myself down here to the bottom. Anyway, Syria says Israel bombed Hezbollah weapons convoy in a regime weapons cache. Now, what they're talking about there when they say a regime weapons cache, they're talking about the Syria, uh, Syria's weapons uh um, warehouse, no doubt, uh, this morning. Now, I am not at all against my own people trying to protect themselves against Hezbollah and them moving in more and more weapons into Lebanon. Uh, but what I am very concerned about is that Israel is playing puppet to NATO and to gain favor and is going to help topple Bashar al-Assad uh, in this war be it indirectly or directly, uh, I can certainly see that this is what is escalating because they're not just hitting uh, the weapons convoy going into Lebanon, but they're also, they hit a Syrian military outpost and as well as they have hit uh, uh, Syria's own weapons cache that they use in order to combat against all these NATO-backed thugs here that have caused the lives of hundreds of thousands of civilians in this country, uh, not to mention that of the soldiers fighting on both sides, it might be. And there's a lot of people that have pretty much thrown uh, President Bashar al-Assad under the bus in this campaign, but uh, I, I just don't see it. You know, they accused him of using chemical weapons back in 2013, only proves out that Erdogan helped get those chemical weapons into Syria, and he smuggled them in with ISIS, and ISIS used it on the civilian population with the knowledge of the U.S. government under the Obama administration. This was done in order to justify putting boots on the ground. But what the U.S. and what NATO allies were not anticipating was for Russia to step in to protect Bashar al-Assad. And now, as I said to you the other day, we are looking at the fact that Erdogan, something I've been saying for months now, uh, is in, it says that he has entered into Syria, uh, that his forces came in there to end Assad's rule. Now, that's not what he said when he told Putin he wanted to go into uh, uh, the northern border there. I uh, uh, forget the name of that city right off the top of my head there that he first went into, Jabar, Jabar, Jabar I can't get the name right right now, but anyway, the first city he entered into that he said he wanted to take out ISIS. But instead, he goes there and he fights a war against the Kurds. You know, everything that... Assad has done, excuse me, that, uh, that Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey has done since he has crossed the border inside of uh, uh, Syria there. He has specifically targeted the fighters that are helping uh, President Bashar al-Assad to regain control of the country. Now he has actually come out and said this is why he's here and it's why he's been here all along. We've reported this on Israeli News Live even back from the very beginning of the coup, when the coup failed, uh, we saw this early on that we believed that this was a staged coup. We did a report, I think it's called Erdogan's Staged Coup on Israeli News Live, clearly identifying that he did this intentionally in order to gain favor with Russia to put boots on the ground inside Syria as if he were there to help the uh, the the Russian forces to, or even, for that matter, to help Assad. But he's never at one time uh, contacted uh, President Assad and say, what can we do to help you recapture your country? Instead, he has been doing the dirty work for NATO the entire time. As one of our own sources said to me that has close ties to Gulen Fagan there, the very man that was accused by Erdogan of the failed coup inside of his own country. 
Uh, he said no. He says Erdogan was promised a great position inside the New World Order if he did the U.S.'s dirty work in the war in the Middle East. Well, he's carrying good on his dirty work plans, and no doubt this is what he's going to do in order to try to gain favor to become part of the in part of the European Union. Again, I think this is one of the reasons why so many refugees have entered into Europe, because if he becomes uh, a member of the European Union, they're going to put him at the head of the totalitarian regime government there, the head of the EU eventually. Maybe that's what he's been promised. I don't really know. All right, moving on to other news, though. There's other things that are going on, guys. It's very serious. Good friend of ours there already happened here. Shared uh, this video this morning. This is in uh, 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 Kerch, uh, 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 Crimea. You're seeing rocket launchers. Uh, these are very sophisticated uh, missile systems that are going in, uh, that are in Crimea. Russian weapons there. They are covered up so that you cannot see them. They are headed up to the Ukraine border. Uh, it looks like to me that Russia is getting ready for an all-out war. And no doubt Russia is already dealing with a lot of threats from NATO as it is. So although I'm seeing this troop movement here on, on the account of, uh, in this case here, with Russia, you know, we got to remember Russia is being provoked steadily by NATO. It says several Russian military vehicles, including anti-ballistic missile systems, the S-300VM and the Ante-2500 Kerch, is in Crimea. And that's what you see that is actually headed up there towards the border there. I say the border, I'm not really sure exactly. Uh, that's my own speculation at this point here. Uh, we can we can look here also uh, on on his site there. They were showing a uh, this man here was showing a map there of where this was in Kerch. He used to live there. And uh, let's just quickly here let's run over here to Google Maps there just to get an eye uh, eye where Kerch um, is in uh, Crimea there. And that way we can just see. Okay, no, I'm sorry, Kurt. Oh, okay, that's the port. Ah, so they came in from the Russian mainland is where that is. So Kerch is the actual port. I know that very well there. So this, uh, if you look here to your right there of the screen there where I have the thing there, this here happens to be, uh, that is Russia itself. And this is where Russia uses uh, a ferry to bring these across there and uh, go on into the country there. So we don't really know where they're headed to. They could be headed to the northern border. They could be headed to other places. Uh, from, from what we see, they're replacing the S-300s that were moved down to Syria. Uh, so it may just be to keep the backup system there in Crimea. It may not be an actual threat of any kind, just replacing from what uh, already happened, has posted on his Twitter page there. Anyway, again, uh, Israel getting more actively involved in this war with uh, Syria there. I know, again, like I said, I, I'm not against Israel protecting themselves because of Hezbollah and moving weapons into Lebanon. It is a threat for Israel's safety on a regular basis. We know that. I understand. I appreciate that. But uh, hitting, hitting uh, the, the, you know, striking the Syrian military as well and hitting the Syrian military's weapons depot when Syria is trying to, to win this war, is just a little concerning to me. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.